Hi everybody, this is Alchemist 2, and I'm back again with another series review. I just recently watched My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, and the episode was called A Flurry of Emotions. Now, from the title itself, is very obvious and indicative whom the subject of the episode is going to be. We all knew that Flurry Hart was going to come back, and Twilight agrees to Cadence's, um... <clears throat> A, um, plan for her to take care of Flurry for the day and she becomes her BAE or best aunt ever and I was thinking that also means before anybody, before anyone else and also babe <laughs> it's just another way to say that it's a abbreviation I thought hmm are they trying to inject more modern day culture and MLP <laughs> or just uh I don't know. I, I just thought that was kind of odd, and I don't know if anybody else noticed that. But it was a really excellent episode, because um, Twilight learned a, a valuable lesson that she shouldn't have taken on Flurry with such a hefty schedule and just being bogged down and not being able to spend any quality time with her niece. And, of course, Flurry... <laughs> gets really angry when she loses her whammy this little um snail thing they call it a snoodle and um <clears throat> she's supposed to give it back to her to calm her down and everything but <laughs> she couldn't find it when she went to the uh the foals home they're there and they all have hoof pox or it was a version of chicken pox i also noticed quite uh, recently that there have been a lot of appearances of Dr. Hooves, and I thought that was very intriguing. Uh, first episode, I didn't point it out because I didn't really notice it right away, and I thought back, oh yeah, he, he was there, he was in the background. He wasn't so noticeable and easy to spot like he typically is, and Party Favor was there. I thought, why didn't I notice a Party Favor was there? <laughs> I was thinking, where's cheese sandwich? <laughs> cheese sandwich should be there. I was looking all over for cheese. I thought, where are you? But he wasn't there. Oh, well. Party was, so that made my day. I didn't see Party's um, other party animal bronies or Pegasus sisters there, I should say. But Party was there, and I was very pleased and very happy with that. And again, when... Cadence and Shining Armor go to the art exhibit that's hold, held by Spearhoof, <clears throat> Shining Armor's friend. Most of the stuff they have there is really avant-garde and just uh, kind of modern, well, yeah, modern art. And um, not to get anybody angry here, but as far as art is concerned, I never really understood modern art. I prefer... The classics and um, the realists and the... I, I like surrealism too, which makes absolutely no sense, so I contradict myself. But I love surrealism because I think it's cool. I mean, it looks awesome and it, it's neat to look at and it's just it's bizarre and <laughs> sometimes uncomfortable at times. But it's really, really interesting and very evocative and you could experience a range of emotions looking at it but if you're looking at modern art you're thinking okay the architecture is nice I like the angle that they they used here but I don't really understand if it's just a black a blank canvas you think okay is that a snowstorm <laughs> what am I supposed to get out of that I don't see anything okay you make millions of dollars just by putting a blank canvas on the wall good for you Hooray for your creativity, but, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't do that, that's wrong of me, and uh, I'm an artist myself, I, I do um, anime, so I guess a lot of people would consider that not art, but, you know, I have my opinion, but I understood how Cadence felt, and I'm thinking, okay, where's the impressionism, Where, where's the real art, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get flamed, and I know it, but it was a really tremendous episode, and I, I really enjoyed it, and I thought it was exceptional, and everything about it was um, really well done, and uh, Twilight redeemed herself, and <laughs> even though she was late, we're going to 
um, the hospital to see the young fillies and foals and, <clears throat> and colts and giving them some cheering up. <laughs> yeah. I also got to, we get to learn a little bit something about Spike, too, and I thought, hmm, I never really thought that he would be the type of dragon that would like presents and, and cake for cheering up. I thought, huh, you know, he's, there's a part of him that's actually kind of a softy, and there's nothing wrong with that. I thought, thank goodness they have a sensitive male character here. And we have, um, of course, Spearhoof was, uh, kind of a stereotype of a lot of emos out there, and I did, I had to. I'm sorry, but I thought when he was talking about the canvas that was completely black, he's he says I call this um, the darkness encountered in the long hallway, or I forget what he called. I mean, it was this uh, ostensibly uh, ridiculous kind of uh, <laughs> title. You think? Are you showing off? <laughs> I think he was a little bit, but it was nice to see that he never thought that his art could evoke other emotions that were not what he was going for, and that I thought was very interesting. That's why art is so important, I think, and uh, I'm going to just sh give a shout out for the humanities here, woo, because <laughs> that's what I studied, and I have a bachelor in liberal arts, and it's just a variety of different uh topics and i'm still trying to figure out what my niche is and i will eventually um but so far it's been kind of a rocky road but eventually i'll get to where i need to be and what i need to do in order to help other people and i want to make people independent i don't want to make them rely on me or the government because i just I don't like people who do that because I think they're just taking advantage. A lot of them aren't, but some of them are. Ooh, I didn't think this was going to get political, but it did. Sorry. Anyway, um, tre tremendous episode. Very well done. Flurry Heart is just so cute. And I, I really do think that Twiley is the the BAE. And, and, a, and a bay, by the way. <laughs> I'm not gay. Uh, <laughs> I also like the fact that she went over to play with the, the cake twins. I knew that would come in because Pinky was going to be a part of that. And, you know, I was interested and very rather intrigued to see like Pinky. You wouldn't think that Pinky would be organized, but she is. She's actually very well organized, and she had everything uh, down to a science, I thought. Huh. To think. <laughs> the ultimate irony. You would never really... Um, perceive her as being such and it just it just goes to show you that there are more facets to these characters and then there was a little in-betweener I don't know if everybody got to see this but it was about the couture of um, Rarity and what she recommended for a good ensemble and I thought that was really neat I'm not really into fashion I just wear what I think is comfortable I go after my idol Einstein <laughs> yeah now that was a man who knew uh, practicality and looked good while pulling it off, if I can say so. I mean, I don't know about you, and I don't care who knows this, but a man like that, be still my heart. I, oh, whoo, that mind. Oh, good Lord. You know, something like that is my main Achilles heel. It's just that kind of brilliance. I just, tell me more, please. <laughs> Dress me with your thoughts. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say it that way, but I just love to be scintillated and uh, tantalized in that manner because it's very alluring and, and very sensual to me. But, uh, yeah, <sighs> guys like that typically don't want to approach a woman like me because they are intimidated, and they shouldn't be. But the right time will come. I think the job will happen, and then... The romantic interest will be followed by that, but life is, need I say more, and that's a rather abrupt philosophical statement, but life is, life happens, and it's just like, this episode, life happens! <laughs> Flory Hart is just a baby, and it, it 
brings back to mind that whole my one of my favorite episodes of Tenchi, and I think it was Tenchi Muyo or Tenchi Universe. I can't recall, but I believe it was Tenchi Universe, and they're accepting a baby into the house, and and Washu is taking care of it, and just the way that she describes that is so beautiful. And I I do hope to experience this someday because I I really want to be a mother, and a good one. I pray, but she said they don't really have any way to speak. They don't know how to yet. So the only way they know how to express themselves is through temper tantrums and crying and they can't tell you I, I'm hungry or I'm thirsty or I'm cold or I want to be held. I, I want you to love me. I want you to play with me. They don't have any method of doing that except for, you know, raising their voice and crying like they do. They're just, they're just infants. They, they have no other way. They, they, don't, they don't have the ability. They have not developed that far yet. <clears throat> of course, they, you know, they babble. And a lot of people say baby babble is uh, its own language. Actually, it is. Uh, I don't know if they figured that out yet, but science is on its way. Yay, I'm happy with that. I mean, I'm not part of that. I wish I were, but because I love language, but... Um, they think it's ba ancient Babylonian or Aramaic, which it could very well be, more than likely. Yeah, there's, that's just a, you know, a, a branch theory, kind of far-fetched. I don't think it's that far-fetched, but sorry, I'm just going off on all kinds of tangents here. Forgive me. But still, excellent episode. If you haven't seen it yet, by golly, watch it, and I'm sure you'll love it. Until next time, live long and prosper. Ciao, tutti!